Hello, I'm Ryan, and today I'm riding from Montreal up into desolate northern Quebec and then down the Saguenay Fjord. I mean, riding along that waterway might mean pavement, dirt, sand. I'll have to figure it out as I go. I've wanted to ride the Saguenay Fjord for a long time. Ever since I heard that this is the largest navigable fjord in North America, I wanted to come see it. I think the navigable thing refers to ships, but to me it always sounded like a challenge. How much of the fjord can I navigate on a motorcycle? Can I ride down the length of it? Can I dip my tires into the sand itself? I don't even know if that's possible, but I want to try. Our first stop on the way into Sagan is Lac Edward. This old railway town was a haven for everybody from wealthy vacationers to tuberculosis patients. All of them sought the healing power of the fresh air up here. They didn't pave the road into the city until recently, though. The road itself is brilliant. I mean, it's undulated, it's cornered. The thing would rival a roller coaster. It's honestly, I think, the best piece of concrete that I've ever ridden. But the town that it leads to is just about gone. From here we head to Lac Saint-Jean, which is the northern starting point of the Saguenay Fjord. And that's where I'm going to hook up with this highway that should give me good access to the channel on the way down. Alright, so Lac Saint-Jean is huge. I think you can kind of see the end of it across the lake from here, maybe. Uh, but it's absolutely colossal. In the last ice age it was frozen. It was a giant frozen inland sea. And as it started melting and the ice age was ending, the glaciers from it clawed their way back up carving out the Saguenay Fjord in the process. When it ultimately melted, this was what was left, Lac Saint-Jean. Very, very large, very, very shallow, which is why it was so good for skimboarding. I mean, it's also huge enough to actually change the climate up here. And that's why you see all this farmland around me and kind of agricultural land. It's because this lake is so big that it makes the climate mild and temperate, despite the fact that we're this far north, basically. It's really cool, neat place. You go on the beach and you just feel like you're at the ocean. Today is fjord riding day, and we do have a lot of ground to cover chasing that waterway south. The first sign is that I'm getting close to the fjord of these little rock walls, and the train gets a little bit steeper and a little bit more carved out, and then all of a sudden it opens up and I'm right there in it. I'm riding beside the water. And that was brilliant until the pavement jumped into the next valley over. For me, navigating the fjord means following it, like a giant blue compass needle, and at this point, dirt trails are my only option for keeping that waterway within sight. The train up here is so nice. <laughs> I mean, it's just like really gnarly, uh, kind of double track, you know? You wouldn't call it a road, you wouldn't call it maybe a trail. It's kind of double track. Um, yeah, just gnarly stuff. Big rocks and big puddles. Super fun, super fun and remote. You get out here and just like, I don't want to talk loud because it's like, it is so peaceful out here. It's wicked, totally wicked. So the train up here has been gorgeous. I mean, I could go literally all day. It's just endless terrain up here. I got a railway crossing back there, and it says you can take trails all the way to Latouk, all the way to Quebec City. I mean, it just goes for hundreds and hundreds of kilometers. Single track, sand, and as I got here, a ton of mud. Have a look at this. Came out walking earlier to see if I could get my bike through. That would be a no. I mean, that is just gonna eat the V-Strom alive, especially on those Battle Hanks tires. So, this is gonna be the turnaround point for me. I jumped back onto the highway for the final stretch, and I had managed to navigate more or less down the length of the fjord at that point. 
but I was still waiting and hoping for that opportunity to really get my bike into the channel itself. In the last few coves that we passed, I spotted a way. This is exactly what I wanted from riding the Saguenay. I guess, as a Canadian, I'm not satisfied to just know my country, to read about it somewhere. I want to actually go to these places and get right down into them to really feel what they're about. Tadoussac marks the finish line for me. It is the end of my fjord riding journey. And the weather was looking super ominous on the ferry into town, but it ended up clearing up when we got to the other side. And that was lucky, because we actually found these enormous hand dunes to play around in. The Saguenay Fjord has been a brilliant ride, and right as it empties into the St. Lawrence, it throws up one hell of a finale. Watching the sand skiers carve around got me wanting to try the same trick with the strong. It's not exactly the right bike for it, but I'm just glad to be out here. I came to ride the fjord, to experience the channel itself. But I was more blown away by the ocean of lake water and the desert of sand on either end of it. To me, they were more impressive than the fjord itself. I didn't expect to find those things either, but I guess that's kind of the point of exploration, right? But you have to go somewhere without knowing what it is you're going to find. Because whatever it is that you do find, beyond that horizon of your foreknowledge, it'll be something new.